Hey folks, this is Mac Hendricks, and I'm here today to talk about uh, Microsoft Teams module that we have inside DSIP router. So uh, today I have a very special guest that is uh, doing the actual course. His name is Tyler Moore. He is the lead um, contributor to DSIP router. So I'm going to bring him in in a few seconds, but uh, just really quickly about what we're going to do today. Uh, what we're going to be focused on today is really around getting you comfortable and understanding how the Microsoft Teams module work by actually going through a live um, demo of how to actually configure and set this up. Uh, so, I mean, things may not go exactly smooth all the way through, but that's what happens when you're actually setting something up and doing it live. Um, so. Uh, this course uh, that we're actually doing right now will be available uh, to folks who actually purchase the Microsoft Teams module. Uh, we'll also have a, uh, a course guide that will be available for purchase. That's actually a step-by-step -step guide of how to actually set this up. Uh, so if you just don't want the, the video, but you also want the actual kind of think of it a little handbook of how to set this up with all the commands. That's going to be available as well. Um, so that will be in the uh, D Open Source Marketplace. So if you go to D Open Source forward slash shop uh, and look under DSIP router, uh, you will find uh, this course manual there. OK, so let's go ahead and just uh, bring Tyler in and uh, I'll have him introduce himself and uh, we'll, we'll get started. Hey, Tyler, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Good, man. Good, good, good. So um, I, I'm glad you were able to join us today. I know uh, you're a little busy, uh, like always, doing stuff. Uh, so for some reason, you can't see me all the way, but it's OK. Oh, there you go. Uh, so um, back in frame. Back in frame. There you go. <laughs> so all right. So this maybe give a quick uh, intro who you are, and um, and then uh, we'll, we'll get started. Yeah, so I'm Tyler. I'm the lead uh, developer here at the Open Source. Uh, we Specialize in VoIP software. Uh, me and Mac co-founded this uh, project. This is the DC Browder project. And uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of it, and that's why you're here. Uh, without further ado, um, let's get right into it. <laughs> there it is, man. Yeah. So I just brought your screen up, and uh, I'll, let you, uh, I'll let you do your thing. All right. So the first thing we're going to start with here is some assumptions. Um, we have a few assumptions that we're going to go over. It's going to be, you're going to need a Microsoft 365 account. Um, right here, there's specific licensing requirements for that account. Uh, you're going to have to have the Microsoft phone system license. You're going to have to have the Microsoft Teams license and Skype for business plan too. They're concluded. It says it all in their Microsoft documentation. Um, these links will also be available in the guide. Optionally, if you need to have audio conferencing for your Teams users, that's a separate license on the Microsoft account. So that's your Microsoft 365 account. Have all that prepared and ready to go before you start this. Um, let's go ahead and go on to the next thing. Next requirement is going to be your subscription. So we're offering the Teams module for DSIP router as a subscription. You can get one to 80 channels. Make sure you have that purchased beforehand. That'll be sent to you in an email, and then you can just have that ready uh, to plug in when we get to the uh, point in the video where we enter that. And then you're also going to have to have two systems, one for DSIP router and then one for your PBX, which is going to be Fusion PBX. You can, I'm going to go over when we're going to install those systems, but you can have those prepared beforehand if you like, and then just skip that point the video or you can do it as if you're installing the whole thing we'll go we'll go through it all right so the first thing <clears throat> get your new box you're going to go ahead this can be your new box you're going to install as the spc this is going to be where you install the zip router uh, you can go to our documentation page and then bring up all the commands goes through it really really simply there uh, we already have that prepped so this is already done for us. Um, I'll hand wave it right now, but if you want to uh, go ahead and install that, you can pause the video, 
go ahead and install adhesive router on that box and then come back here. Um, next thing we're going to do after that is we're going to, you can see this is our box that we just set up, um, set up our DNS record. So you're going to want to create a DNS record that we're doing this in digital ocean right here. Uh, but it can be any D, any DNS provider that uh, you use. Create your A record or your uh, quadruple A record for IPv6 and point that to your new SPC. For example, and one thing to note here is if your if your DNS record is not routable, so you don't have a public uh, publicly available DNS record, you want to set that with the hosting CTL command on that box before moving forward. I'll just show that really quickly. Command is hosting CTL, set hostname, and whatever hostname you want to have there, SPC. For this example, SPC1, that customers, that use of router down there. That's if your DNS record is not publicly routable. Some providers like GCP have uh, internally routable only, and you want to make sure that this is set on the box. So all your, uh, your PBX can be with it. All right, once that's done, you can go ahead and we're going to log in to that box. I'm going to go ahead and grab our password for that DSIP router account off the camera here. All right, and I'll just log in. go. So this is our new DSIP router SPC that we're going to be configuring with the MS Teams. Log in for the first time, and we're going to go over to our licenses here. There's a license manager. This is in system settings, and then click license manager. All right, now here's where you're going to add any different types of lights, any different type of subscriptions that we have provided for you for the DSIP router box. This is where we will add the D open source uh, MS Teams license. I'm going to go ahead and grab that one that I have prepared. We'll copy that, paste that in there. Um, this is a test one, so you guys can you know, use this little I here to type it in if you want. Click add, it will automatically go check that. If it's success, there we go. Pretty simple. After that, we need to go ahead and configure our SSL service. It's another setting for that in the system settings. Certificates. Here's where you'll configure all your SSL certificates. If you have typically what we do with the uh, teams domains is we'll configure a wildcard cert. It's the easiest way to do it so you can uh, have multiple SPCs on there and use just one cert. You'll click add here. And then we're going to uncheck replace the default cert. And we need to give it our domain name here. So this is going to be star customers. Uh, piece of router.net for us. It's the domain that we're reusing as our example here, and what we're doing star dot it's wildcard cert. Click on generate there, it'll give you the command that you need to generate that. And this command, if you run it, I'll, I'll put an extra note in here. If you run this on this server, It'll go ahead and generate that. You'll probably be a root already, but if you're going to run it locally, like I'm going to show right now, you're going to want to do it in the temp directory. So moving over to our, uh, our terminal here, this is on our local machine. I'm going to generate it there so I can upload it through the GUI. You can also generate on the server. It's just the permissions are going to be a little bit different. We're going to do it in temp, let's encrypt. And all, all I had to do is just change out where those directories are. Point temp, let's encrypt. So I'm doing it locally. Last free email address. I'm 
And there's a little ULA there in the service. Uh, go ahead and check yes after reading that. Um, you can also sign up for the newsletter, digital freedom, up to you. Now, what we do here, this is the part where you got to go back to your DNS provider and create this text record. It's checking if you actually own it. Come back to here. We're using DigitalOcean again. Go to our domain in question. And you can see I have a previous one here. But I will regenerate that just to show. Tax record. And we want the copy the terminal there. I post this little text string in the output here. Copy that bad boy. Paste in there. That's done. Come back to your terminal. Yeah. Go verify that. And then it will spit out a little display message. There we go. And it's saying, hey, this is where I, congratulations, your certs have been created. Here's your wildcard certs. Perfect. So it's going to be in templates, encrypt, live domain. So now we can go back to GZIP router, replace the default search. Chain. Okay. That's what I wanted there. And then we will test that out. So reload. And we're going to come to our terminal here. So you're going to want to go to your local machine here or any other machine other than this one to uh, do, to run this command. Uh, if you run it locally, you'll have to uh, do it in a different way. So let me show you first how I would usually test this in SSL. Use this S client here. I'm going to give it the fully qualified domain name, C1, but just router at customers. That piece of router dot net. And we're going now to the, um, the TLS SIP port 5061. And if it's able to connect, you'll get some type of output here. If it isn't able to connect, you'll get an error instead. And I can see that it's using, it's got the correct common name up there, so everything looks good. All right, and then after that, we're gonna go ahead to adding the MS Teams license. Nope, we already did that. So we activated our license. Now we're gonna go ahead and configure Teams to route. So we're going to have a small caveat here. You should have in your Teams admin, in your admin center for Microsoft, this is admin.microsoft.com, you should have your domain already set up. This is a very similar process that, that we did uh, with the Let's Encrypt, where we added that little text record in our uh, DNS provider. You'll have to do the same thing with Microsoft. If you are just sending this up for the first time, just log into your uh, 365 account on the admin page, admin.microsoft.com again, and go to settings and sign in and security, set up your custom domain. And then just walk through those steps. It's all in uh, the, the Microsoft documentation as well. So you can just Google search that, you'll find it. Once you have that set up, all your licenses are good to go. Then we can move on to installing PowerShell on this piece of product box. So I like to do it this way. You can also, if you're on a Windows machine, you can install PowerShell modules here on your local machine and then run it. Doesn't really matter where you run it as long as it is able to connect to your Teams account. So for us, we're going to go ahead and open up Terminal. I already have this here on the your DCIP router box. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste these commands to 
install PowerShell. It's available in uh, Microsoft's documentation as well. We'll search away as most things are. That'll take a second. It'll configure uh, PowerShell. Seven, that's done. PWSH to open up PowerShell. Now you can see we got this little prompt change. This is PowerShell on that uh, DC Firebox. All right, now we're going to go ahead and run the commands that we need to. Let's stop scrolling. We're going to go ahead and run the commands that we need to actually configure Microsoft Teams. So the first thing we need is the Teams module. Name of that PowerShell module is Microsoft Teams. Install that. All right, now we're going to import that module. Import module Microsoft Teams. Uh, it's imported. We can go ahead and authenticate with it. All right. Here in the Git credential prompt, you're going to go ahead and put your Teams user, your 365 login. So I have it off screen here. I'm going to go ahead and put those in. All right, and then we go ahead and connect to Teams using those credentials. All right, and if you get a prompt, if you get an output here, that means that it is your connected. Now we're going to define our SBC. This is going to be SBC. We're going to define this. It's going to be your fully qualified domain name. So for us, that's SBC one dot customers dot All right. Now we're going to we will create policy for that. And that we're going to give it is going to be 5061 by default for the uh, SIP order QS. If everything went correct there, you'll get output. And we actually forgot, this is, this is okay. So we forgot to enable it. We're going to show you how to remove this and then come back and fix that issue. So I'll actually show you guys in the GUI where that is. If you come to admin.teams.microsoft.com, this is where these are accessible in the, the browser. If you go to direct routing here, you can see that SBC we created here. It is not enabled right now. We can check it here and just enable it. So that would fix the issue. Or we could show you how to fix that on the command line. Here. All we got to add to that command is enable. All right. And in my notes, I usually put I usually limit sessions, but you don't have to. It's up to your requirements, really. I'm going to leave them at, I'm going to accept them at the time here. Enabled. All right. 
And you can see it says here, enable. Oh, you know, that's good. All right. So now that we have our SBC created, we're going to go ahead and create the PSTN usage. I'm going to copy and paste some of these on the screen. You guys can pause the video, copy these commands, or pull them from the admin guide. They're all going to be in there as well. And it looks like I already have this one. So that's completely fine. Previous iteration, but that's okay. We're just going to leave that. Create the voice route that's associated with that SVC and then associate them. Policy. So that policy I forgot to delete, but we're going to leave that. Should be associated already. We're going to move on with the chlorophyll. So those are associated. Now you have your SBC, you have your SBC route, and you have the policy connected. Then. We're going to move on to setting up the user in DID. So set up these Teams users. I'm going to go ahead and define my user. We're going to do Timor customer.net. This user should be already created in uh, your Teams account, and they should have a license associated with them. If they don't, you're, you're going to get an error. So make sure that user is already created before you continue. Yeah. And grab the number. If they have their license, uh, a team's license, they'll have a, uh, you can get a number there too for that user. You can do all of that in the, uh, in the browser, there, the one that we showed earlier. The DID that I'm going to grab off screen here. I've already associated with this user. Now we're going to connect those. I think this is a voice routing policy. I'm going to connect it to our user, connect our user with it to the SPC. Now, we'll define our outgoing number. I'm going to detect direct routing. So it looks like we had that number assigned to somebody else. So let's go ahead and check that out. We go back to the Teams Admin Center, the users. Our phone number. Okay, so this user has a different number associated with it. purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to use the number that's currently on here. We'll change that in our commands. So it's 504-297. And see who that other number was assigned to. It's a little odd, but for demonstration purposes, go ahead and just change our number here to one that we probably know that is associated uh, with that user, 504 287 Okay. And we can double check. It's 
show you users. If you go to users, it should be showing up as that number. All right. Now the last thing we need to do. So this number assignment does take uh, up to five minutes for it to actually propagate. Last thing we're going to do is see if the policy actually updated on the team side. You can run this command, check it. Should see that the policy has updated to our new SBC. If that's good, once it says your new SBC, that means it's configured and we can move on. All right, the next thing we're gonna be looking at here, configuring GCIP router for Teams 10. So we have configured the team side. This is the uh, Microsoft 365 account. We just did all those changes there. We're gonna go ahead and configure this router to accept all those different changes that we just made. All right, and now configuring domains, we're gonna go ahead and click add. It's going to be our SPC one. .net. The domain type, we're going to go ahead and click MS Teams Direct Routing. Okay. So once we have our domain added, make sure you click Reload and then go ahead and test the connectivity. Make sure you're getting all green arrows, get green check marks there. All right, now our domain is set up. We're gonna go ahead and set up the outbound calls from MS Teams to Fusion PBX extensions. So this will be Teams users calling from a, calling to an extension on Fusion PBX with some type of prefix. So it could be whatever your, it could be a nine, it could be whatever your organization wants it to be. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our carry groups and we're gonna set up Fusion PBX here. Go ahead, give it a name, Fusion PBX carrier. And we're gonna leave IP off, you know, carrier plugins. Go ahead and click the edit button. We're going to go to endpoints here, and we're going to add in our future PPX. Name here, so it's like whatever you want it to be. And here is going to be our full PBX FQDN or the external IP there. Either one is fine. PBX1. Customers. It's a router. And our prefix here, we're going to go ahead and use 34 for our example. It can be whatever your organization wants it to be. Click update. All right, and moving on, we're going to go ahead and set up routing outbound calls from MS Teams to Fusion PBX extensions. First thing we're going to do is we're going to decide as an organization what our prefix is going to be. So when we dial a number with our Teams user, what is going to be the prefix that's going to say this is going outbound to Fusion? Uh, for us, that's going to be 34 for this example. So I'm going to go over to Fusion PBX. Oh, I'm sorry. We need to add in this router our carrier group here. I started adding this in. This is going to be we'll add in from scratch here. So new carrier group is gonna be Fusion PBX. Name it Fusion PBX carrier. Keep it on IP off, no changes there. I click edit and go to endpoints. And we're gonna add in Fusion PBX here. You can name it whatever you want. I'll just again Fusion PBX. All right, now our host name or IP. 
Let me grab that. For us in this situation, it's going to be pbx one dot customers dot data dot net. You're going to want to make sure that rather make sure that this is going to be on the external profile. I did not copy that. I'll type it in. pbx one dot customers dot dot net. Make sure you're using the port for the external profile on GPBX. So it's typically 5080. And then go ahead and click add there. Update. All right. Now we're going to go over to outbound routes and set up an outbound route going to that carrier. You can name the same thing you want. I'm going to name it outbound to Fusion PBX for MS Teams. All right. Now here's where we're going to do our prefix matching. Matching. This is going to be on the two. So teams, it's going to be the plus and the country code for us. It's going to be in the US. It's going to be plus one. Now we're going to give it our prefix 34. And the only other thing we're going to set here, it's going to be our carrier group at the very bottom of the selection. Select Fusion PBX, click add. There we are. So that's all the settings for the decent router side. Go ahead, click reload so we don't forget. And we'll go over to Fusion PBX now. All right, back in Fusion PBX, I'm going to start off with, um, I'm going to start off by prefacing this that your carrier should already be set up. Um, what I mean by that is your DID that you're routing to Fusion PBX should be pointing to Fusion PBX and whichever authentication method you're using, IP off or registration should be set up. For us, I just went ahead and went into the access controls and I added in this carrier, uh, just added, added in flow route um, because we're using IP off instead of uh, register. Regist Okay, so after that's set up, you can go ahead and add in DSIP router. As you can see, I already added that in there. Just go ahead and put the sitter, description, DSIP router for MS Teams. Click save. Then go to status. SIP status, reload ACL, now that's done. You can authenticate both of them now, your carriers and your and with the DCP router box. Now we're going to move on to the actual routing part of it. Go ahead to inbound routes here. Let's dial plan inbound routes. And you can see I already did this one before. We're going to go ahead and redo it. Click add. All right, so we're going to call this inbound from MS Teams. And I'm going to click, let's click advanced first, actually, and then it's going to kind of clear it. Inbound from MS Teams. Now we're going to give it our condition. So our condition here is going to be the destination number. And we are going to match on that same prefix. It will have it right here. So it's plus one, three, four, and any number. You can do optional for the plus if you want there. And then for the country code, us that's in the US, that's gonna be a one, but you can put your country code there as well. Action. For us, we're gonna send it to 1000, that extension that we created off camera. Uh, you can send that to ring group or to anything you want really, uh, recording, but send it wherever you want there. And that should finish that up, save. And we're going to do one extra thing here. If I go back to the sprout. So the reason why we set this to 1000 is so it would generate this dial plan, but then we're going to go back in and edit it. I'm going to go ahead and put a dollar sign one here so that any number that comes in from this router is going to be accepted. All right, so it'll so that it will dial whichever number was uh, sent. So it's not just going to be 1,000. Basically, you don't have to create a bunch of rules for every different number. 
Um, go ahead and click save. Now let's go ahead and test it. We got our Teams user over here logged in. I'm gonna go ahead and type in here our prefix. So that'd be three four, and then whatever number we're dialing. And since we use that dollar sign one, we can call any number now. That's gonna be on the box. Um, I am gonna still call one thousand because I have that user already registered. I have that extension registered. So we give that call. Correctly, should get that call there. Test test. And that is it. Um, I think we're going to bring Mac back in here and we're going to close out. Uh, I think the last thing I will say in conclusion there is if you guys purchase the uh, training course material, you'll have a few more scenarios that we support. And we'll keep on updating that as we go. Uh, Mac, do you want to take it away? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So thanks, Tyler. I appreciate that. Um, you know, Microsoft Teams is, is not necessarily the, the easiest thing to integrate with. So we spent a lot of time um, really uh, making this experience a little bit easier for you. So hopefully you enjoyed um, uh, this, uh, this course today. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please, uh, you know, send us a, a message either via um our Twitter page, so you can find it at, uh, at DSIP router, or you can um, send us an email at info at uh, dopensource.com. So uh, thank you again, Tyler, for a great presentation, and uh, we will talk to you all soon. Take care.